the cold. It's a feeling we've all experienced. Yet very few of us have felt true cold. The kind of cold that breaks men. The kind of cold that slows the body, the senses, and the mind. The kind of cold that is like any other. Like the final layer of hell has finally crawled its way to the surface, spreading its tendrils for all to suffer. There is no turning from it. There is no hiding from it. All you can do is grasp onto that tiny spark and hope for the warmth that may never come. This is the world of Frostpunk. Frostpunk is a semi-steampunk world set in the early 19th century after a cataclysmic event known as the Great Freeze destroyed the Earth. This is an extremely harsh world with extremely unforgiving circumstances. When I first played this game early last year, it wasn't the brutal, albeit extremely fun building mechanics that hooked me. No, it was the world. What happened to Earth? What caused all of this? What is this world truly about? So many questions and so few answers. Until now. In this series, I aim to break down the first Frostpunk bit by bit in order to gain a better understanding of the world and lore of this incredible game. So, for the first time, welcome everyone to the Frostpunk lore series where in today's primer episode, we will be discussing what we currently know about the world based on all developer-confirmed information. Before we dive into the lore of Frostpunk, we need to talk about the background and really establish what this series will be about, especially for those who haven't played the game. This is not a cut and dry, straightforward story. The narrative of Frostpunk is told in small snippets as we explore the world. There isn't a campaign to tell you why the world is this way, who built these massive steam core engines, or what really happened to everyone else. All there is are pre-established scenarios where you just try to survive the best way you can. In fact, this vague nature of everything is the point. In a developer Q&A, lead designer Kuba Stakowski stated, The way we designed the world and the world building was for some things to stay intentionally vague. We did not want to focus too much on establishing lots of backstory, which is not the point of the game experience itself. The whole ethos of this game is, who the hell knows what happened, we're just trying to survive. Which I think is perfect because if you were put into the boots of any of the leaders you play as in any of the scenarios, how would you know what's going on? How would you exclusively know what's happening when no one else does? All you can do is infer based on facts and try to formulate your own opinion on what actually happened. So at the end of the day, this game's lore will be like trying to complete a puzzle blindfolded. So let's just establish the facts. We are playing as survivors from England. As the Great Freeze was beginning, the government saw fit to establish massive generators known as Steam Core Engines to act as a heat source for newly established cities in the north. Why would they go north and not the equator, you might ask? Well, in the same Q&A, Stokowski confirmed that the whole world temperature fell to a single global minimum. So tropical locations on the equator were not prepared for the Great Freeze in the slightest, and thus fell into turmoil. So the locations in the north that were actually prepared prepared for the cold, had the proper resources and equipment, were far more suited for a mass migration of survivors. In reference to the rest of the world, Stokowski would state, while the story is focused on London and England, the calamity was global, and different countries saw it coming in different ways. So you might reasonably expect different areas of the world to have some strategies of survival which we do not depict in-game. Some of these strategies will be covered in future episodes, but for now, just know that the UK isn't the only surviving country in the wake of the Great Freeze. Another important thing to mention about the world we're trying to establish here is that this is, clearly, alternative fiction. Yes, it takes place on Earth, yes, this follows a real-world country, and yes, this world has giant robots. In the beginning, I described Frostpunk as a semi-steampunk world, and that's the truth. There are elements that are accurate to what 19th century technology would be, and there are steampunk elements like robots and steam core engines as well. Stokowski would state, We did not try to focus too much on your typical science fiction steampunk. However, it is a steampunk world. And actually, steam being the heat source as well as a power source makes a lot of sense to use the genre in the setting we built. And 
For all intents and purposes, that is essentially all the background knowledge you may need to understand the basics of the Frostpunk world. In future episodes, we will be diving into each specific scenario, dissecting little bits of lore here and there, analyzing found text, and truly deciphering the world of Frostpunk. However, the next episode won't start in the cold. It'll start in autumn, before the Great Freeze. So I hope you will join me in this new series because this will definitely be a roller coaster you will not want to miss.